Yeah, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to EHEF, EHEF 2021, EHEF Indonesian 2021 Institution Talk Show. And my name is Gregory Sari Budiharjo, and I, I'll, I will be your host for today. And in this session, in this session, we are going to talk specifically about top rank applied science universities in Germany. And before we start, I want to remind our audience on YouTube, you can write your question in the chat box and I'll be re re read your question in the Q&A session. Okay. So I'm going to give you a brief description about its institution and its official representative. Uh, first, we have Degendorf, De Dogendorf Institute. Uh, first, we have Degendorf Institute of Technology. It's a research-oriented technische Hochschule in Lower Bavaria and founded in 1994. It's a public university. And the next one, we have Osnabrück University of Applied Science. It's a public university of applied science located in Osnabrück, Lower Saxony, Germany, and founded in 1971. So, so if you want, find more information about Degendorf Institute Technology, you can visit www.th-deg.de n or, and if you want to, if you need more information about Hochschule Osnabrück or Unif uh, Osnabrück, you can visit www.as-osnabruek.de slash n. And as the official representative of Degendorf Institute of Technology, please meet Frau Lisa Gipper. Hello. Good afternoon, probably Lisa Hello. Hello, thank you for the nice introduction. It's really nice to be here. <laughs> yeah, thank you for joining us today. And as the official representative of Osnabrück University of Applied Science, please meet Frau Kerstin Frudel. She is a director center for international students in Osnabrück University of Applied Science. Hello, good afternoon. Very nice to meet you. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Okay. Uh, yes, we are going to the our live talk session. And I have a question about top rank, top rank Applied Science University in Germany. And I want you to answer my first question. Okay, first question. Uh, as Degendorf and Osnabrück might not as big as Berlin and Hamburg or Munich, and what is the advantage of studying in smaller city compared to big cities? So uh, you can start, Frau. You can start first, Frau Kerstin Frodo. Okay, yes, thank you very much. Um, I do not know how many people live in Degendorf, <laughs> but in Osnabrück, um, we have 165,000 inhabitants. So probably um, compared with many Indonesian cities, it's kind of small. Um, the advantage though, and this is something that our international students tell us um, over and over again, is that they feel at home quickly because they know the way quickly 
and they know places and then they see people again and that makes them feel at home. Um, also, what is great is Osnabrück is surrounded by a lot of um, forests and um, meadows, there are lakes, there are rivers. And so um, if you want to be in nature, if you want fresh air and green, um, you, are, you are there quite quickly. Um, and despite the size, we have a very rich cultural offer in Osnabrück. Um, but the students will say um, they can still focus on their studies a lot. And after all, this is why they come, right? <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, you're right. Also, uh, I mean, going to green area can relieve our stress. And as a student, we have more stress from studies, from lectures, and et cetera. So, uh, Frau, Lisa, Frau Lisa Gepper. Lisa Gepper. Yeah, thank you. Um, I can totally agree um, with, with Ms. Frodel. Um, actually, I would have said kind of the same <laughs> if I was first. Um, Dengdorf is really a bit smaller, it's around 37,000 inhabitants. Um, but yeah, it's also um, has the advantage of getting to know each other super quickly. Um, so we have a campus university, which means, um, yeah, all our, all the, the lectures are at the same place. Um, so you really meet people again. Um, we have a lot of international students, um, around 30% um, of our um, students are internationals. And we have more than 100 uh, nationalities on campus. And so even if it's really small, um, yeah, it's really diverse and um, also the culturally rich. And yeah, Dengdorf is also located um, next to the Bavarian forest, where there is also a lot of possibilities for hiking, for seeing nature. And we are located really well and um, between bigger cities, like you need, for example, two hours to Munich. Um, there is Passau, which is also really a great um, cultural city. Um, yeah, you also are close to um, Austria, for example, Salzburg, um, which is really nice to visit. So you have a lot of advantages there. And um, yeah, students at our university always say it's a little bit like family. And yeah, that's what we, what we really like and what we're really proud of. So our international students also really feel home quickly here. Okay, thank you for your answer. And if we, also if we are studying in the smaller city and then we can focus to finish our study, right? Yeah. And I think you are mute now. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Uh, there is university in Germany and then Technische, Technische Universität. And what is the difference between university and an applied science university or university and Hochschule? And what is the difference? So uh, we can start. So we can start from from Lisa Gipper. Yes, thank you. Um, so the university is a lot more um, research approached and um, the Hochschule, the University of Applied Sciences, um, yeah, is a lot more practical. So um, what you learn um, is a lot more connected to um, yeah, the, to the economy, to um, practical experiences. For example, we have a lot of engineering, um, uh, engineering programs at DIT, and they, for example, have a lot of labs, um, a lot of corporations with um, with companies. So they really also get the practical approach, and that's one of the the main differences um, for. Uh, um, universities of applied sciences um, yeah the applied already kind of explains it so um, yeah 
it's less research based and um, more practical. Okay, thank you. So we learn more theory in university and we learn more practical in Ophelia or applied science of university. Correctly, but of course there's theory as well. So <laughs> okay, <laughs> yeah. And Pro Crescent Frodo. And yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, I I agree. Um, but I want to say um, the universities of applied sciences, or in the German word is Hochschule or Fachhochschule, um, they were founded um, by the German government in 1971 um, because the German government then said we need a new type of university which gives the students a theoretical base. Um, but then um, does not prepare them for a, an academic career or a scientific career, but prepares them for the job. And so that's what we do. Um, we give the students a theoretical base and, and a lot of theoretical knowledge as well. Um, but also our studies contain, uh, for example, case studies and um, excursions and field trips and things like that. A lot of group work, a lot of group presentation. And that way, the students are prepared to take over a position in a company or an industry um, with responsibility. So you learn how to make your own decisions and how to found them in theory and in models and stuff. But you learn to apply this knowledge to a real life problem. And that's what our students already practice while they are at the university. Um, and we, you know, one one very obvious difference is that we do not give PhD degrees. We do cooperative PhDs with universities, but we don't give the PhD degree out of our own um, power, so to speak. Mm, but our bachelor and master's programs are accredited. Um, and if you have finished your bachelor's at the University of Applied Sciences, for example, you can go on to a traditional university if, for example, you find out that you do want to be an academic. Okay. Okay. Thank you very, thank you very much for your explanation. And in the university, we need to write our exam in the holiday, in the summer holiday, or in the winter holiday. Okay. And How do you select your applicant to get admitted into your respective university? And you can go first, Frau Kirsten Frodo. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, the, the selection process is different in the bachelor's and in the master's field. So in the bachelor programs, we select um, the students strictly by um, the grade that they get from secondary school. So um, that's that's the one big thing. Um, in the master's field, it's um, more complicated for us, but maybe more interesting as well, um, because then we look at, for example, if the bachelor fits with the master that somebody is applying for. Um, and then sometimes we ask for a letter of motivation and we look at the CV of the people. And for example, if somebody already has work experience that will help to get a master place in our university. Yeah, things like this. Thank you very much, Kirsten Prudel and Bravo Lisa. You yes. want to... <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah, it's actually the same process, I think, in most um, universities of applied sciences. Um, what's um, comes additionally at DIT is that for some um, as well bachelor but also master programs, we have admission tests. Um, so um, if it's, for example, the bachelor program um, artificial intelligence, then we have a little admission test, which includes um, logical knowledge, um, mathematical um, tasks, for example. So yeah, to make sure that they are yeah, eligible for the programs. And of course, also the language skills are really important. So um, um, English, of course, for the English bachelor programs, um, but also 
it's important for us to yet to see if they have German knowledge skills um, because that's always really important in to live in Germany, even though we don't require the German knowledge, German knowledge in the beginning of the English bachelor or master program. Um, yeah, of course, that's really a plus because um, you just do need it in daily life here in Germany. So yeah, that's are the most um, required things. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. I think German language is, the, is one of the most important things to study in Germany. So uh, do we need to attend student college if we want to go to your universities or your bachelor? And you can go first, probably, Salipur. Thank you. Um, yes, so it depends on the your career. So if high school students um, want to do a bachelor program um, after graduating at, in Germany, it depends on their education. So there are different school systems uh, in Indonesia, as I know. And um, there's, for example, the website uh, Anabin. .de, which shows um, a lot of um, high schools. You can type it in and see if you're eligible for applying in Germany already. You could, for example, go for the student colleague if you're not eligible yet, um, but also could study for, um, for a year in an uh, internationally recognized university um, before coming to Germany. Um, but this really depends on a lot of um, factors and on the education of the student that wants to apply. Okay, thank you very much. And Frau Kerstin for the... Yeah, it's the same for most universities in Germany. Um, we all abide by the regulations that the Anabin website gives us because the Anabin website is created by the, by the conference of the education ministers in Germany and um, and so we all use the same or almost the same rules for um, for admission. Um, if students are interested in studying in our university, they can send us their high school um, documents and then we will check them and give them advice on whether they they can join a student colleague, for example, and what to do, how to get there, things like that, because I think it's really complicated and I think if you don't know our system, you are going to need advice, which is totally okay. And we are here to give it to you. But it's it's very individual. So it's better to send us an email and send your documents and then we'll check them for you and give you a hint. <laughs> Thank you very much for your question. Or we can contact the Adi before and we can find information about education system in Germany. So uh, as far as I know, there is no tuition fee in 15 out of 16 states in Germany, but we need still to pay semester by track every semester. How is the regulation in your, uni in your university and what will we get by paying it? So Frau uh, Kerstin Frieden, you can start first. Okay, I will, thank you. Um, we are in the federal state of Lower Saxony and we do not charge tuition fees from international students. Um, our semester fee is, I think, 350 euros per semester, but you get a lot of stuff for it. Um, you get um, a bus ticket for the entire state of Lower Saxony, which means that for free, you can go to bigger cities like Hamburg or like um, Hanover, you can go to very famous university places like Göttingen, which is also in Lower Saxony. And um, so, you know, this, this enables students to do a lot of stuff on weekends if they find the time. I, I know studying takes a lot of time too, but sometimes you get this chance. And another thing is that um, part of the 350 or 360 euro um, go to the Studentenwerk, which is, um, well, the student services, if you want. Um, and that way you can eat at very, very good prices at the student restaurant. 
Um, in addition, the student restaurant at our university in Osnabrück is very good and gets a lot of awards for the nice food. Um, that is one point that the students like very much and the people who work there like me as well. <laughs> thank, yeah, you. thank you very much. And Pralisa Gipper? Yes, thank you. Um, so in Degendorf, um, we also do not charge tuition fees, um, but have the monthly, uh, sorry, for the semester um, fee of 62 euros. So it's um, less, but we also do not have, for example, the bus ticket. Um, as Degendorf is really small, um, so for example, in Degendorf, you really do not need a bus um, everybody is going around by bike or um yeah or just walking because everything is really close together so we do not have um um something like a bus ticket included um but yeah the 62 euros is actually also um for the studentenwerk as Ms. frudel just explained um the student service and it's the same with our um, yeah, students uh, restaurant then for the cheap prices and yeah, just the, the services um, they offer. So yeah, 62 euros per semester. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. Yeah, I mean, it, it is a really, really good price for highest education in Germany. And so for our audience, if you want to study abroad, you can go to Germany. And then how about the living costs in Osnabrück and in Tegendorf? And so Frau Kersin, you can you please answer my question first? Of course, it will be my pleasure. Um, the cost of living, well, I'm going, to, well, we have two, we have two big campuses. One, in, one is in Osnabrück, and then one is about 65 kilometers west of Osnabrück in Lingen. And Lingen is very close to uh, the Dutch border. It's almost in the Netherlands. Um, and the two places have different cost of living. Um, we always estimate that you need about 850 euros per month in Osnabrück and in Lingen. Actually, although it's a smaller city, a little more because the housing is more expensive. And how is that sum of 850 euros per month, how, how is it put together? Um, it's the housing and well, in Osnabrück, you can get a place um, for living for maybe 200 euros, but it goes up to maybe 450. So it depends on if you are lucky or not. And then you have to buy health insurance, which is 110 euros per month for every student. Um, and then you need food and you need um, books and things like that. And that's how this comes together. But the most important is the housing and the health insurance. And if you have covered these two, then, well, it depends on your habits, whether you are an expensive person or whether you are an inexpensive person. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your answer. And Frau Lisa Gipper? Um, yeah, in Degendorf, it's kind of the same, to be honest. Um, we also say around 850 euros, between 700 and um, 900. Um, yeah, of course, it depends on your style of living. Um, but the housing in Dengdorf um, is also between 300 and 400 euros. It depends. We have a lot of student dorms. Um, there are super modern ones that are just newly built, so they are a bit more expensive. Um, there are some that, uh, yeah, already exist longer and are not that modern, but for example, um, only charge 280 euros a month then. Um, so it really depends on the student dorms, but of course you can also rent a private um, accommodation and there the prices differentiate the same. And yeah, also the 110 euros of the health insurance, that's also, I guess, all over Germany. Um, and that's kind of um, the living expenses, yes. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, okay, it depends on our lifestyle. And 
Okay, as a student, do you have an opportunity to do a part-time job? And what kind of part-time job can we do as an international student in Osnabrück and in Degendorf? So, uh, can you please answer my question first, probably, Sagepar? Yes, of course. Um, so, yeah, typical um, part-time jobs for students is, for example, being a waiter or a waitress at a restaurant or cafe. Um, therefore, it's really important to have um, good German skills, though, um, as, for example, in Dengdorf, um, yeah, the elderly people um, won't speak that good English and also would not really would not really understand or would not be um, would not want to speak a lot of English when they're at a restaurant. So German is really important here. Um, and yeah, of course, there are other jobs as well. Um, working in in a shop, for example. And in Germany, you can work 20 hours as a student per week. Um, this depends also on the student visa. So there are regulations that allow international students to work. Um, but yeah, there are some op opportunities but um, this depends also on the study programs. For example, there's something um, called Werkstudent, um, which is always related to your study program. Um, so you could work in a company and um, yeah, but this is, yeah, depends on the individual student. Okay, thank you very much. And Frau Karsten, for the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would like to add, um, well, in Osnabrück, of course, you have job opportunities, um, but I think it's important to know about the legal framework for international uh, non-EU students. Um, usually they are given um, a work permit, which allows them to work 120 full days per year or 240 half days or a mixture. Um, and that's sort of the limit. And um, yeah, so that's the legal framework. And in Osnabrück, we have um, a lot of logistics companies. So there are jobs in the field of logistics where you work, um, yeah, and you put together packages. Um, I'm not sure if that is a great job, but it brings you money. And then of course, you can always try to find a job in, in a hotel or also in supermarkets. Um, and then we have, well, Osnabrück is a very healthy, economic region we don't have a lot of unemployment um, which makes it very safe as well um, so there's not a lot of crime and um, you can walk around the city really um, without looking behind yourself all the time <laughs> um, yeah and so yeah there's a lot of student jobs um, also nowadays I mean after with the corona pandemic we have learned to work online a lot and so a lot of our students nowadays work online as well. Um, so they can sometimes work from their home and not even go anywhere and make money anyway. So those are options to consider as well. If you have a great job in Indonesia that you can do online maybe, and you come to Germany, maybe it's good to keep it. It depends. You would have to consider the exchange rate from your money to our money and everything, but maybe it'll work out and it'll be easy for you. Who knows? But if you have questions about it, you can always consult the university and we'll be there to help you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Frau Kerstin Fredel. It was really good to know about that. And okay, uh, that, was, that was our live talk session. It was really fruitful session in that, especially about top rank applied science university in Germany. So, uh, we have gathered a question from our audience on YouTube, and I will read it. And it's representative. Uh, one of you can take turn to answer it. Okay, the first question. I so, uh, the first question. After completing master in Hochschule, would I be able to continue to study for my doctorate degree? Yeah, I know you have to. You have 
you answered it, but could you please repeat your answer again, uh, Frau Frodo? Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, well, as I explained, um, the universities of applied sciences do not have the power to endow doctorate degrees. Um, we do have um, doctoral students on our campus anyway, because we do a cooperative um, project with a traditional university. So if you study in our university and you have a good connection with your professor and that professor is convinced of, of you as a great scholar, you can ask if a doctorate degree would be possible and then I'm sure the professor would help you. Um, but in general, it would be easier if you worked um, or if you studied at a traditional university to go into their doctoral program. Hopefully this is helpful. Okay, thank you very much, Frau uh, Frodo. And the second question, you mentioned that how should you prepare students for real world life? Is there any company that you are affili affiliated with? Okay, uh, can you please answer my question, Frau Giffer? Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Um, we have a lot of partner, uh, partner companies, sorry. Um, on our website, um, we also have an overview of our partner companies, but it's, for example, um, since we're in Bavaria, the automotive um, economy is really, um, really strong here. So we have BMW, for example, and but we also have other partnerships with, for example, Siemens, Adidas, the really worldwide known companies as well as um, local regional companies that really are good companies in our region. So um, yeah, there are a lot of companies we work together and also for internships, for example, as in, if you're doing a bachelor's degree here, an internship semester is compulsory for all our students. Um, but there are great opportunities. And we also do have our career service, which um, helps all students to find a job and to find their internship. Um, also, for example, with CV checks. So they really get prepared um, to study or to find a, a internship. Thank you for your question. Okay. Do you mind, uh, sorry, do you mind if I add something? Because uh, yeah. it just came to my mind. Um, I think this is another advantage of studying in a smaller city because, okay. you know, in a smaller city, we have better connections with industry because, you know, we don't have so much competition. And so um, I think places like Degendorf or Osnabrück, um, we all have a lot of industry partners because of this. So it's an advantage to come to a smaller place. Thank you, sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. So uh, I, uh, I think it doesn't matter if you are studying in big city or in a smaller city, the quality of university in Germany is really, really high. Am I right or? Okay, yeah, thank you, thank you. And the next question, it's about tuition fee. Okay, if I am European citizen study in Germany, free or health tuition fee. So uh, I think uh, the, 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 there is no tuition fee and it's not for only for Germany, but as international student, we can, we don't need to pay the tuition fee, right? Oh, okay, yeah. I'm not sure if I understood you correctly, but um, their, their tuition fee of 62 euros is still there. Um, but the health insurance, um, if they have a European health insurance, um, then they they can use this for studying in Germany with the EHIC card, so the European mm -hmm. health insurance card. Um, so the 110 euros um, for the health insurance do not have to be paid. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, no tuition fee, but you need to pay semester by and insurance and etc. Okay, and the next question, 
I interested to apply for PhD program where I can find list of professor profile to discuss regarding the research plan. Thank you. I think, uh, I think this question is not relevant, right? Uh, or maybe you will try to answer it or or maybe I can, try, they, I can try to answer. I would say a question like this must be addressed to the DAAD. There's the DAAD in Jakarta, and I'm sure the colleagues there will be able to answer. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, if you have, uh, so, so for our audience, if you have a question about education system in Germany, you can go first to the DAAD or DAAD. Okay. And the next question. Is there any non EU support program in each of your Hochschule? If yes, do they offer class for German language? Sorry, could okay. you repeat it once again? I It was hard to understand. Uh, is there any support program for non EU citizen? And if yes, do they? If yes, do you offer class for German language, or do you have a German course in your university? So, um, so there, all our study programs are open for EU students and non-EU students, and we also offer um, language classes on campus. Yes, so we have, of course, the German language classes, um, and there is also the opportunity to write the test of test, so the German um, language test here at our university um, to to get a proof of the German language skills. And what we also do have. Um, is a preparatory course. So if um, a student with B1 German um, language skills comes to our university, um, this is unfortunately not sufficient for studying a German course because we it depends on the program, but we need either B2 or C1. Therefore, we created a preparatory semester, which is called Let's Get Started. And in this semester, you only have German language classes, um, yep, as well as cultural classes, for example. But it's really, um, yeah, meant to prepare you for um, the the German B two level. Okay, thank you very much. And this is my last question: What made your university is better compared to other university? So. Could you well, also repeat this one? Sorry. Uh, what made your university is better compared to other universities? Mm. Well, Osnabrück University of Applied Sciences among the universities of applied sciences is one of the largest ones. We have 14,000 students. A lot of the universities of applied sciences have two or three or 5,000 students. And because of this, we have a wide range of subjects and a lot of interdisciplinary studies as well, where you um, combine different disciplines to have maybe a broader degree. Um, what I really like is that um, more than 90% of our students find a job within three months after graduation. So that's really great because they, de they don't have to look for a job for a long time. And um, we also have a lot of support for international students. We have the Center for International Students, of which I am the director. And um, this is a support structure where we accompany you from right now, where you are still thinking about what should I do in my studies, all the way until you find your job. So during the whole study program at our university, we are there for you. And if you have problems, it doesn't matter what it is can be how to finance your studies or finding a job or an internship or whatever it is. You can also come and talk about being homesick and we will try to help because <laughs> it happens. Um, yeah, so I think this kind of support is, um, is special because not all the universities in Germany offer a center for international students. Um, 
yeah and then um we we are we have great results in rankings with a lot of our study programs we rank in the top 10 in germany in the universities of applied sciences and we are really proud of that thank you okay thank you very much uh, frau frodo uh, do you mind if i ask you one more question from our audience on youtube uh, okay uh can you mention some of the well-known industry in your city i was hoping i could get internship in abicor Binzel. so uh uh frau frodo can you please answer my question yeah. um Okay, yes, we have, um, for example, we have a um, Volkswagen plant in our city where the Porsche is assembled. So I think that is for everybody who is in, in vehicle engineering, that's, that would be a great internship and a great start into a career. But I also mentioned logistics. I'm not sure if everybody knows these companies, but for example, we are the hometown to Hellman Logistics and they are worldwide. Maybe you even see their trucks in Indonesia. I don't know, um, but I'm sure they are there. Um, yeah, and then in Osnabrück, we have a lot of food industry and food processing industry. Um, this is another huge branch. But then also very high-tech technology. Um, yeah, and well, we call them the hidden champions. They are not world known, worldwide known companies, but in their market segment, they are the number one or two or, you know, so they really offer great jobs and also jobs with an international orientation. Um, and so you could really start a good career and I'm sure in, Deg in Degendorf as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. And probably Sagiper? Yes, um, of course, I would also like to ask, answer that, but I would also like to say some words on the previous question, what makes Degendorf Institute of Technology special? Um, but actually, I think you can really compare both of um, the universities we are here now. Um, we also, uh, we are not as big, but we have around 8,000 students, um, which is also bigger as other universities of applied sciences. And yeah, as I already mentioned, we have 30% of international students. So for us, also the services for international students are really important. And we also have an international office and um, we, for example, have our um, international tutors, which are um, students themselves that um, are there for international students to, to organize events, to organize cultural um, cultural evenings, but as well activities um, to, to come around the region, um, to visit places and um, are also always there for them to assist in, in problems. Um, I think for students sometimes, um, yeah, they are shy to contact um, staff, but if it's, there's a student that could help them, um, yeah, it's, it's way more comfortable, um, but as well, of course, we always support them. And yeah, I would really, I would really recommend our region as well. Bavaria, I think is also worldwide known. Um, we, we have a lot of um, attractions and beautiful countryside and cities. But yeah, to, to answer the question about the companies around, I already mentioned that before um, the automotive um, economy is really strong here with BMW and Audi. Um, but yeah, as well, Baden-Württemberg is not that far away um, where there's, for example, um, also um, Porsche and we, we have as well um, a lot of engineering um, companies around. But for example, for studying tourism, um, we have also the, the airport in, in Munich, which gives a lot of options for international uh, for students in general, but in the tourism sector, um, yeah, there, there's a wide range of options um, to choose from. But it's well, yeah, as Munich is really close. Um, a lot of our students that graduate um, find jobs in Munich. 
Okay, thank you very much uh, for your answer, Frau Gilbert. And well, it's more than end of our session about top rank applied science universities in Germany. After this, everyone can visit the virtual booth to meet all the representatives and talk to them personally. It's your chance to unleash your curiosity. Go ahead and ask many questions. So, Frau Lisa Gepper and Frau Kerstin Frodel, vielen Dank. Ich bedanke mich bei Ihnen für Ihre Zeit and auf Wiedersehen. Thank you to you. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, and yeah, of course, we're happy to answer the questions on our booth. See you there. Okay. <laughs> bye bye. Bye.